Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Adarsh and today we'll implement the logistic regression algorithm from scratch using Python and we'll also implement it using the SQLon library and we'll compare our results at the end of this video. Okay, so here are the timestamps to each section in the video. Uh, you can find the written version on Medium as well as the entire code and explanation on our Google Collaboratory and I link these in the description and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video it really helps so let's get started so what is logistic regression so in statistics logistic regression is used to model the probability of a certain class or event logistic regression is uh, similar to linear regression because both of these involve estimating the values of parameters used in the prediction equation and this is all based on some given training data. So linear regression basically predicts the value of some continuous dependent variable, whereas a logistic regression is used to predict the probability of a class or an event. So the output of logistic regression always lies between zero and one. And because of this property, it is usually used for classification purposes. So now let's look at the logistic model. So consider a model with features uh, x1, x2, x3 up to xn and let the binary output be denoted by y and this can take the value 0 or 1 and let p be the probability of y equal to 1 and the mathematical relationship between these variables can be expressed as this equation that is natural log of p by 1 minus p equal to b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 etc and here um, b, b0 b1 b2 these are the parameters or weights that will be actually estimating using training and here the term uh, p by 1 minus p is known as the odds and so the natural log of p by 1 minus p is called the log odds and this is simply used to map the probability that lies between 0 and 1 to a range between minus infinity and plus infinity so this is the basic math behind what we are going to do so from this equation we will derive the value of p so the natural log on the lhs can be eliminated by raising the rhs to the power of e we are left with this equation and now we can easily simplify this equation to get the value of p as this if you divide the value of numerator and denominator by this we'll get the value of p as this expression so if you are familiar with the sigmoid function that is commonly used in machine learning you'll notice that this equation is also has the same form that is 1 by 1 plus e raised to minus x where x is b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus extra so it always maps to a value between 0 and 1 just like a probability so uh, we'll be using this equation to make our predictions and next step is to estimate the values of the weights b0 b1 etc but before doing that uh, we will define a loss function so the loss function is basically used to calculate the error in our predicted value our goal is to find the optimum values of the weights so that this loss or error function is the minimum for any predicted value so this is the loss function that we will be using it is called the l2 loss function uh, here y is the actual value and y bar is our predicted value so to find the error we'll find the difference between y and y bar and square this this will be our error for any given value of x right and to get the total error for our training data set we simply find the sum of this error for all the rows in the data set and that's why we have the sigma function here so this is the actual value and this is the value that we predicted using our equation so our goal is to minimize this entire error or loss for the given data set to do that we'll be using the gradient descent algorithm and this whole process is referred to as the training process so for a detailed explanation on how the gradient descent algorithm works, uh, you should also check out my video on linear regression using gradient descent. So you might know that the partial derivative of a function at its uh, minimum value is equal to zero. So gradient descent basically uses this concept to estimate the weights of our model by minimizing the error or loss that we defined in the previous section. So for the rest of this video, let us assume that we are predicting the value of y and we have a single feature x on which y is dependent. Here y i bar is the predicted value for each x i in our given data set, right? So x x i is the dependent variable and y i bar is our prediction. So all we have to do now is to estimate the values of this b0 and b1 
so that our predictions are accurate. So initially let the value of B0 and B1 be equal to 0 and let L be our learning rate. So learning rate controls how much the weights are updated at each step in the learning process. Next calculate the partial derivative of the loss function uh, with respect to B0 and B1 and here uh, DB0 is the partial derivative with respect to B0 and DB1 is the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to B1. In case you are not familiar with calculating the partial derivative, let me quickly show you how we arrived at this. So the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to B0 is dou L by dou B0 and that would be equal to 2 times this bar comes here uh, yi minus yi bar and next we'll find the partial derivative of each term inside the bracket and since yi is constant its partial derivative will be equal to 0 so minus the partial derivative of yi bar with respect to so let's find the partial derivative of this term separately. So to find the partial derivative of this term, uh, we'll be using the u by v rule, uh, which basically states that the derivative of a fraction like u by v is equal to the denominator into the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator into the derivative of denominator divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so. So I think uh, you could also use the chain rule to find the derivative of this term, but I'll be using this. So here uh, the denominator into the derivative of the numerator, since the numerator is a constant, that'll be zero. So minus uh, the numerator into the derivative of the denominator, okay? So derivative of one is zero plus derivative of e raised to any term is that term itself. The derivative with respect to b0 of this this term is going to be minus 1 and derivative with respect to b0 of this term is going to be 0 so that's it divided by uh, so this minus 1 and this uh, minus cancel off each other and we are basically left with e raised to minus b0 minus b1 xi divided by 1 plus e raised to minus b0 minus b1 xi the whole square so this can be rewritten to this form okay uh, that is simply splitting into two so the value of this particular term can again be rewritten as 1 minus 1 by 1 plus e raised to minus b0 minus b1 xi okay so if you notice this and this is actually equal to yi bar okay this is the equation that we are using to predict so this is equal to yi bar and this also equal to yi bar so this whole equation is actually equal to yi bar times 1 minus yi bar okay so this is the required partial derivative of this term so let's bring this negative sign outside so that is minus 2 yi minus yi bar and we found the uh, derivative value of this to be yi bar times 1 minus yi bar okay this is our required derivative value and similarly the partial derivative of loss function with respect to b1 is going to be the same thing except that we will have an additional term xi here because when we find the derivative of this term with respect to b0 it's simply minus 1 instead of that minus 1 will have minus xi here so the value of the partial derivative tells us by how much the values of b0 and b1 should be updated so that our total error is reduced ideally we want the error to be zero which means that our model is 100% accurate so next step is to update the values of b0 and b1 uh, using the calculated derivative value okay so b0 equal to b0 minus the learning rate times db0 and similarly for b1 so every time we do this the value of our error is reduced 
and so our predictions become more and more accurate okay so we repeat this process until our loss or error becomes zero so each repetition is known as an iteration or an epoch so i ran this for uh, 300 iterations and we can see that after around uh, 150 200 our loss has dropped to zero okay so we will repeat the this gradient descent algorithm 150 times okay or for 150 epochs so now let's implement this so i have uh, imported all the libraries that we need so you can download the data set using this command i've taken the data set from kaggle from here uh, you can download it manually from here as well next we load the data into this variable called data let's see how it looks like so this data set basically describes if a product was purchased or not depending upon these features so we'll be predicting this value purchased which is a zero or one and we'll be choosing age as our feature x okay so this will be x and this will be y uh, visualize the data set using matplotlib and also divide it into training and testing data using the train test split function okay so this is what it looks like this is the age and this is whether the product was purchased or not so now let's create the logistic regression model and before that we will define a few helper functions so here we shift the mean to the origin this is done just because of the characteristics of the logistic function next we have a predict method which takes in x b0 and b1 as arguments and this basically plugs in these values into our uh, prediction equation and returns the value so for each value in x we are making a prediction and returning that value so the contents of this array will be our predicted values y bar so we'll also convert this into a numpy array so it is easier to work with now let's implement our logic regression algorithm so first of all we need to normalize the value of x next let's initialize our values now we will uh, run our learning or training process for 150 times so let's define a for loop so let's make the prediction let's call our variable y pred that is equal to predict x the current value of b0 and the current value of b1 okay at this point if you want you can also calculate the loss uh, by plugging in the values into the loss function that we defined but i'm not going to do that here so let's directly find the values of uh, the partial derivatives with respect to b0 and b1 of the loss function so let's call the value of the partial derivative of the loss function with uh, respect to b0 as d b0 and with respect to b1 as db1 okay and we will now simply convert these equations into code and similarly for db1 is actually the same thing the only difference is that there is another x term here okay so the sum function is actually a substitute for the sigma function in our equation and everything else is just the same just convert it into a code next let's update the values of b0 and b1 finally uh, we will return the final values of b0 and b1 so now that we have uh, created the model uh, next step is to train the model using our training data okay let's find out what's wrong uh, so i found the problem so i haven't defined any value called e so instead uh, we'll be using the function called exp uh, which can be found in the library math so from math import exp and this is basically used to raise uh, any value to the power of e okay so now let's try and run this okay uh, for e okay so i did not put a range in here so this is actually a range object okay now let's try and run this okay so we have the values of b0 and b1 so now we are ready to make the predictions with our testing values okay so we need to normalize the values of uh, the testing values of x now we can predict the values okay so now we have our predictive values in y pred but as i said in the beginning uh, logistic regression is used for classification so if we check the value of y pred now it will contain uh, values between 0 and 1 or the probabilities that were returned by our predict function 
So to convert these probabilities into 0 or 1 values, what we are going to do is that uh, uh, we'll define a threshold. So let's say 0.5 and all values above 0.5 will be considered to be a 1 and everything else will be considered to be a 0. So you can actually change your threshold value to any suitable value you like, for example 0.7 or 0.8 depending upon your use case and your model. So now if we check uh, all values have converted to zeros and ones so now we are ready to plot this and check so these are our predicted values now uh, you can also find the accuracy so what I'm basically doing here is that every time my predicted value is equal to the actual value I'm incrementing this variable accuracy and so my total accuracy would be uh, the value of this variable divided by the total number of predictions okay and it turns out to be 76 percent and now let's uh, try and implement the same algorithm using the sklearn library which has an inbuilt class called logistic regression which does the same thing that we just did so this is the code for that so from sklearn.linear model we import the logistic regression class uh, we create an object of the class and we simply fit uh, call the fit function uh, on the training data and we are reshaping the values and this done just because uh, the fit function expects the values in a certain format let's run this so now uh, we are ready to make a prediction so let's do that so we call the predict function on L on the logic regression object lr model and we pass an x test okay next let's try and plot this and also find the accuracy okay so this will uh, plot the values and this is used to find the accuracy so it has an inbuilt function called score to find the accuracy we pass in the test values and it will automatically calculate the prediction and compare it against test so let's see so this is the graph and our accuracy is around 73 percent so that is kind of surprising actually because the accuracy of our model that we created from scratch seems to be higher than the accuracy of an inbuilt model uh, sometimes these values could change uh, depending upon you know the variables that we use for training so that's it thank you so much for watching uh, if you have any suggestions or questions please do leave them in the comment section below or you can reach out to me through email and please don't forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel for more such content and I'll see you in the next one